What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, but I am here on the Fanalytics YouTube channel. I'm going to be putting out content around once a month on this channel, so make sure that you subscribe, like this video, you know, all that kind of stuff so that you can see that content when it comes out here. We've also got other great content that's going to be dropping on this channel, and they would had an awesome Pokemon Unlimited base set uh, unboxing that they did recently. It was a sealed base set box. They got some awesome cards in there, so make sure you go and check that video out. Now, what I'm doing in this video is that I'm going over the top 10 Silver Age key comics, the Silver Age Grails. And on my channel, I put out the first part of this video, numbers 10 through 6. And in this video, I'm doing numbers 5 through 1. Now, before we get into that, we have got a giveaway that is part of this video specifically as well. And so we've got this here. We've got X-Men number 221, first appearance of Mr. Sinister. Great key comic. If you want a chance to win this book, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. You have to be subscribed to this channel. Like the video and leave a comment with hashtag fanalytics. I will put you know, that right here. So leave that comment with hashtag fanalytics, and then we will pick a winner for this book. All right, now let's get into these books. Let's talk about a little bit more about what I did here. And so, like I said, this isn't necessarily the top 10 in order of value. This is the top 10 in order of significance, in my opinion. Other people might have different orders that they put these in. This is my opinion. This isn't just Marvel. This is Marvel and DC. Now, for pricing, I did what I've done in other videos like I've done before on my channel, where I looked at the most common grade on the CGC census. And I just do that because it gives me the most, uh, the highest chance that I will have a book that has sold more often. So if you have a really high grade, maybe it only sells once a year. If you have this most common grade, maybe you get a few sales a year. You have a little more data to work with. So that's what I picked here. Then I also looked at the price of this book, the trends, prior to the comic boom. So the main point for this, for me, was that from what I've been seeing with a lot of price trends with comics is that the comic boom, it's kind of like it never happened. That's the way a lot of these comic prices have changed. And so you'll have like a trend line here, then you'll have a big spike, and then the trend comes back down and starts continuing again. So you have that trend line that's continued, you just kind of ignore the comic boom. So I'm looking at the prices prior, what that rate of return was on that book prior to that and extending it out to now. And that's how I'm coming up with my estimates. And now from that, we can see which books look like they're still overpriced. Maybe you want to avoid them, which ones are getting close, you want to watch, and which ones maybe are at a time where you really want to consider picking them up. So like I said, I'll be going over numbers five through one here and then looking at all of those combined together and we'll see which ones look the most appealing. So let's get into these books. All right, so here we are with number five. If you haven't checked out the first five, so numbers 10 through six back on my channel, make sure you go check that one out after you've watched this video, of course. So we are starting at number five here. This is Incredible Hulk number one. This is a multi first appearance book, but the big one is Bruce Banner and the Hulk. Now, this is a great cover. I love this cover. It's got a really cool dark background with the gray Hulk on it. And it's a much less common book compared to a lot of the other Marvel Silver Age keys or Marvel Silver Age grails. Most common grade is a 3-0, just 161 copies on the census. And you can see I've got a few different pieces of information here. If you haven't watched my other part, I'll explain them real quickly. So I had made a similar video in August of 2021. So I had those census counts from that. So I thought it would be interesting to also show how the census has changed since then how many new copies have been added to that census now some of it is going to be people that are cracking submitting and, and regrading books but i think a majority are new submissions and really shows that because of the prices that we saw during the comic boom it really drove people to get their books graded because there's just so much value added to them so you can see here in august of 2021 back when i made that prior video there were 148 3.0s on the census. Now there's 161. Jump of 13 copies or 9%. For the total census, 2,018 copies, a jump of 141 since that prior video or 8%. So finally broke that 2,000 mark with this book for the total CGC census. Now, what I also did is I estimated the current price of the book. So the current price of the book for a 3.0 I have as $17,000. 
Then I took that pre-boom annual returns. So what we're doing is we are assuming that the comic boom, that big spike in prices that we saw from 2021 to 2022 never happened. And it's basically, we're looking that the trend that this book was following just continued since then. And so we're looking to see when it gets back down to that trend line. Is it close to that trend line? And that's where I'm thinking that I'm comfortable or feel safe purchasing those books. That's the basis for this information here. Now you get to make your own decisions. You know, if you want the book, you don't have to wait until it's at that trend line. You can do whatever you want, but this is what I'm presenting here. Now the pre-boom annual return for Hulk number one was 7% from 2016 to 2020. Now in April of 2020, this book was going for about $9,800 in a 3.0. That would put its current value at $12,000. You can see that is quite a bit below where this book is at right now at $17,000. That's a downside potential of $5,000 or 29%. So this is one that I personally would definitely be a little cautious around right now. Hulk number one through six had some pretty big spikes over the comic boom and so i'd just be a little nervous about picking those up this book in a 3.0 did have a peak sale of thirty thousand dollars it has come down 43 percent since then but it does appear that it has a little more ways to go before this one gets to at least that trend line that it had been on prior to the comic boom all right now number four we've got x-men number one this is the first appearance of all the X-Men, also the first appearance of Magneto. So yeah, we do have another villain on this list, but uh, this is not one where it's just dedicated to a villain. Now, this is not my favorite cover. One of the big issues I have with it is it it's hard to get one that really looks nice and bright. And so a lot of times with these white covers from this era, you, you get a lot of either tanning or just yellowing of the cover. And it's just something that you have to find for me like that right copy that, that I, I would really want if I was going to pick up this book. Now, the most common grade for X-Men number one is a 3.0. There are a lot of copies of this book out there when you compare it to the other major Silver Age keys or, or grails. There are 5,970 copies total on the census. Back when I did that prior video, there were 5,344. That is a jump of 626 copies or 12%. At the 3.0, there are 496 copies, a jump of 66 copies or 15%. That is a lot of additional copies of this book added to the census. Now, the current price for a 3.0 is about $8,000. There's definitely some price compression on this book around the 3.0 to 3.5 range. The growth prior to the comic boom, now I had to do 2015 to 2017. The reason being that Marvel reacquired the X-Men, the rights to the X-Men, and it caused basically like a new rebaselining of the value for this book. And so it made it difficult at that point to get the trend. So I had to pull the trend from earlier and then I'm extending it from that new baseline that it set when Marvel reacquired the X-Men. So 11% annual return on this book. And so I used its approximate value in about April of 2020 of $4,300 using a 11% return, its current value should be around $5,900. So I think this one as well has a pretty big downside risk at this point. The tough part with X-Men number one really is that CGC census. There are so many copies of this book out there and this book spiked a ton. A 3.0 went as high as $16,800. It has come down 52% and yeah, it's come down a lot, but it went up so much that I think it still has some room to give before it's you know back at that safe point where I'd consider buying this book. So X-Men number one, I'd be a little cautious around this one right now, even with the X-Men seeming to be potentially playing a bigger role moving forward in the MCU at some point. All right, now number three, we have got Fantastic Four number one. Now, this is the first appearance of the Fantastic Four. I mean, this is the Marvel book that, you know, is thought to have saved Marvel, the, the superhero book that kicked off all the other superhero books for Marvel. Now, the most common grade for Fantastic Four number one is a 3.0. There are 251 blue labels on the census, a jump of 34 copies since August of 2021, or 16%. Now, the total census has also had a pretty significant jump. It's at 2,830, a jump from 2,573 or 257 additional copies or 
I mean, these are big books. These are expensive books. And this is a lot of new copies that were added over the last year and a half because of that comic boom. Now, the current price for 3 I have at approximately $14,000. Prior to the comic boom, that uh, time period from 2013 to 2017, and again, just like with X-Men number one, Fantastic Four was reacquired by Marvel with respect to movie rights. And so it caused a rebaselining of the book, and that's why I couldn't use that 2018, 2019, 2020 data. And so prior to that, had a annual return of about 10%. Then I looked at the price in April of 2020, which is about $8,000, and that would put its current value at $10,500. Again, another one where you can see it's still quite a bit above where I would estimate the value of this book at, downside of about 25% or $3,500. So definitely one that I would be cautious about. Now, it did have a peak sale in a 3.0 of $26,100. It is down 47% since then, but this one really went nuts during the comic boom. So again, I'm not surprised, like with X-Men number one, that we're seeing a pretty strong correction with this book, and I could see it coming down more. All right, now we're into the top two. We finally got a DC book here. This is showcase number four, first appearance of Barry Allen, first appearance of The Flash. Now, there is some argument out there about what officially kicked off the Silver Age, but this is the one that is generally considered to be the book that did it. Uh, so we've got showcase number four, and I mean, look at that census. <laughs> this is an example of early DC Silver Age keys and how much more rare they are than the Marvel books. So this is from 1956. I mean, this is seven years prior to X-Men number one. And that's why with X-Men number one, it has about 10 times as many copies on the census. So this one, total copies right now, 570. Back in that August 2021 time period, there are 528. So a jump of 42 copies or 8%. The most common grade is a 4.5. Current census has 47 copies. August of 2021, there are 44, a jump of three, so 7%. So not a lot of copies. This is on the lower end for most of the books that I've talked about in these two videos uh, for, for how many books have been added during the last year and a half. Now, this is a difficult book to price. Uh, it just, it doesn't sell all that often. And so relatively challenging to come up with value, but I have estimated the value of a 4.5 at $21,000. This one has a relatively low annual return compared to the Marvel Silver Age keys, just 6% from 2015 to 2020. So based on the fact that this book was going for about $16,000 in April of 2020, I have its estimated current value at $19,000. So that puts a downside of about 10%. Now, honestly, that's pretty close for this book. I mean, when you've got a book that comes up for sale as rarely as this one does, you can only be so picky on price. So in reality, to me, I think this one is pretty close to within range of where I would be considering picking up this book if I was looking for this book. Now, it did have a peak selling grade of $32,838. It has come down 36% since then. But like I said, this one at anywhere around this price point, you know, $20,000, give or take, if you were looking to add this one for a 4.5, I would definitely be considering that right now. All right, now for number one, I think we all knew what this book was going to be. This is Amazing Fantasy, number 15, first appearance of Spider-Man, King of the Silver Age, most you know popular character probably in the world for comics. Now, the most common grade for this book is a 3-0. There are 271 copies on census, a jump of just 14 from August of 2021, where they're 257. So just a jump of 5%. I think that's the lowest of any of the books that I've talked about in this entire list. Now, the total census went from 3,465 to its current value of 3,735, a jump of 270 copies or 8%. Now, a big part of that might be that this book already had so much value that a pretty large percentage of them were likely graded. And so even though there were big value jumps in this book, there weren't a lot to really pull out of the woodwork to add to the census, but we did still have some jumps in the total census count over the last year and a half. Now, the current price of a 3.0 is about $26,000. Prior to the comic boom from 2014 to 2020, this book was returning about 12% annually. So in 
April of 2020, this book was going for about $16,000 at a 12% growth rate. That would put it at around $22,500. So it still definitely has some downside to it. I mean, it's downside of 13% or $3,500. However, I am only talking about one grade here. There are some grades that have corrected already a little more than others. For example, the 4.5 based on historical prices looks very appealing right now. So you can't necessarily just take you know one grade and apply it across the entire spectrum of books. You do need to go and check individual grades. This will give you a general idea, but there are some grades that are maybe getting a little more appealing quicker than others. And like I said, a 4.5 looks pretty appealing right now at the prices it's at. Now a 3.0, this book, <laughs> I've talked about this book a lot on the channel. I've talked about it a lot on Instagram. This book went nuts. And I warned people about this one. I said, be careful buying this book during that, that comic boom. And I've also been saying recently that it's a book I've been watching again. It's one that I'm getting more interested in. This book in a 3.0 had a peak sale of $48,000. It has come down 46% since then. It still looks like it has some room to give. Now, the one thing I do want to point out, though, is that this book has an approximate annual return of 12% it's only at about a 13% downside right now. So that means if you push that out a year, so instead of right now, we look at April of 2024, the approximate value of this book would be about $25,000. We're right about there then in a year. So even if you bought the book right now at these prices, you'd probably be about even within a year or the prices really might not drop all that much more it's possible they'll just stay stable for the next year and it'll eventually catch up so yes there is still about a 13 percent downside on this book but it does look like all things considered you know economy all that kind of stuff that it will catch up within about a year to those values all right so now let's look at everything together let's look at which books seem like they are the ones that maybe you want to be looking at right now to pick up which ones to be a little cautious about and which ones to avoid all right so here you can see that we've got all 10 of these books in order that we talked about in the video on my channel as well as the one here on fanalytics now first let's look at the ones that i would consider potential buys so i've got these highlighted in green and yellow now the green ones we've got journey into mystery 83 and tales of suspense 39 that means that these are the books that i feel like they're right at that point where i would consider buying them right now the downside risk is very low or appears to be very low now remember you always have to take your own you know, risk into account with this but at these prices the downside risk appears to be very low for those two books for first appearance of thor and first appearance of iron man so two that i would definitely be considering now i have amazing fantasy 15 and showcase number four in yellow the reason being that i would not be too concerned purchasing either of these books right now with the prices that they're at. Now, showcase number four, part of it is because of the rarity of that book. You just don't see it come up for sale very often. So if you're getting it around that price point, given its annual return on investment, that kind of thing, I wouldn't be concerned picking it up. Amazing Fantasy 15, it has corrected significantly. And again, a book that has about a 12% rate of return, it has about a 13% downside right now. So even if you bought it at the prices today, you would be in theory back to even within about a year. So another book that I wouldn't be too concerned picking up right now, especially considering how big of keys those are. You only get decent windows to pick up books at a reasonable price every so often. And so that's something where I would really be considering those two as well, considering the magnitude of those keys in terms of DC and Marvel. Now, next, let's look at the ones that I would avoid. So there are two books here. The first one is Incredible Hulk number one. There's a couple reasons for this. One is that it has a downside potential of 29%. This book really spiked during the boom and it is still elevated in price. And that makes me nervous. The other reason is that when you look at its rate of return prior to the comic boom, it's just 7%, a lot less than the other big Silver Age keys. So not only does it have a lot of downside risk, it tends to increase in value more slowly than the other Marvel keys, meaning that it will take it more time to make up that difference. So Incredible Hulk number one just feels very risky to me to buy at its current prices. 
Now, the same thing goes with showcase number 22. Now, there is something to be said for James Gunn, the DCEU, and, and everything like that, elevating the prices of this first appearance of Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, all the other DC keys. But it does have the biggest downside risk of every book I looked at. 35% potential downside risk. And it ties for the lowest ROI of just 6%. So it appears to be a very overpriced book at this point. And it would take a long time to make up that difference if you bought the book at the current values. So it's a book that could very likely stay flat for many years or continue on that downtrend. And so I would just avoid personally showcase 22 and incredible hulk one right now now if you get a great deal on something then there's always exceptions to those rules but based on current prices i would avoid those two books now let's talk about the last four here so i have these in orange these ones i'm just marking as watch not necessarily books that you want to pick up right now but books that you want to keep an eye on because maybe the prices get to a point sooner that become more appealing. We've got Fantastic Four number one, X-Men number one, Fantastic Four number five, and Amazing Spider-Man number one. All of these are great Silver Age keys, but they all have downside risks of about 20 to 25%. That's one of the things that makes me a little bit nervous about them, as well as their rates of return of around 10%. So you've got a couple years, even if you bought it at the prices right now, before they would reach that current trend line. And so that's why I would just be patient with those books. There are other ones that I feel like are better values for your money right now. Now you might say with Fantastic Four number five, that it has an annual return of 18%, downside risk of 19%, it should catch up within about a year. The only thing that makes me a little nervous about Fantastic Four number five is it's felt like some of that spike has been, or a lot of that spike has been tied to speculation on Doom appearing in the MCU. And I just see so many copies of this book come up for sale, even with the relatively low census count compared to other big Silver Age keys. So it just, it feels like a book that a lot more people are flipping than holding, unlike some of the other major Silver Age keys like FF1, Amazing Fantasy 15, X-Men 1, that kind of thing. So I'm just a little less confident in that book. It is right on that edge between the orange and yellow where I would put it, but I'm erring on the conservative side with it partially because of the number of copies of this book that I've been seeing come up for sale. So those are all the books. These are the ones that I would, you know, consider picking up right now, the ones I would avoid and the ones that are on my watch list. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video, got some useful information out of it, especially if you've been considering picking up one of these big Silver Age key comics. If you did enjoy this video, if you'd like to see more content like this, make sure that you subscribe to the Fanalytics YouTube channel. Make sure you like this video, leave a comment if you want a chance to win this book. Remember, leave the comment with hashtag Fanalytics to have a chance to pick up this book. And remember, I will be putting out content about once a month here. So if you wanna see that dedicated content for this channel, you've got to subscribe to this channel. And I will see you again in the future on this channel with some great videos.